the Pioneer approached me about replacing the speakers, you can hear it's godly, it sounds phenomenal. But I pitched this idea to them. As you saw, I did replace the head unit, the Alpine head unit, gone. And if you've seen the Alpine system in this car, it really is probably the most dated part of the whole vehicle. Set in the box, that now says Pioneer. The head unit, the controls, there's tons of crap with the Alpine system. I'm sure it was useful back in 2001. This is much more streamlined. Not only that, we've modernized this car without compromising the fact that it is an era-specific vehicle. So we do have Apple CarPlay, we do have Bluetooth, we do have touch screen that's actually responsive, and one little carrot that I'm going to show you. I'll show you guys a variety of the things that are exciting about the head unit. Having a modern head unit, being able to hook your normal phone up to it, use Bluetooth, use USB, use even aux if you wanted to. And then this, on the other hand, is a beautiful fold-out screen, touch screen, all the, all the wild stuff that you come to expect. DVD, CD, stuff that I won't particularly use in this car, but oh my god, it's gonna work. Amazing. Compared to that $20 Insight head unit, which obviously is a world of difference, this one does allow you to charge your phone while it being plugged in. It's about a 1.5 amp draw, so you can actually plug your phone in and use it all together. Comparing the look of this to the old Alpine system, aside from my finger smudge marks, which the camera picks up beautifully, this just looks good. The aesthetics are clean, nice solid buttons, and of course that's one of the reasons I've loved working with Pioneer so much. Yes, this is a partnered video or a sponsored video, but there's a reason why I choose to work with Pioneer. I get a lot of offers from a variety of different audio companies, and I always go back to Pioneer because I love their products. One of the reasons why is the aesthetics. They look beautiful, they look clean, and really modernize the interior of the vehicle. This is why I love Pioneer. Look at how clean that is. Like, it doesn't look like it's trying to be anything crazy. It just subtly updates the vehicle. It doesn't even try and bring attention to it. It just looks clean as hell. Of course, the carbon fiber needs a little bit of polish. You can see it's a little faded compared to the brand new black head unit, but that is sexy. When you hear me say this is a genuinely a first test. Oh, Jesus. Why is everything going off? What the hell? Oh, there it goes. Oops. There you go. Genuine first test right there with my own wiring and it works. I have to adjust how the angle of this is. It's kind of sick. Auto flat, maybe? No, let's see. See, now that's nice. It turns off and on with the ignition. I have all that set up. Right, goodbye. That moves so much quicker than the other one too. Oh, that is cool. Five seconds of research made this part really easy. This button right here, <laughs> press and hold it. And then now, you can hear as if it goes all the way up, it hits the top here, so we don't want that. But it's pretty nifty, because you've got shifting in and out, which we want out, and then we want this, that uh, hits. So we want it right there. So now, I don't have to worry about any of this hitting my lovely leather. This might not look like peak performance, but this is exactly what accomplishes all of my goals. This lets me run the existing system. If I really wanted to go back to the Alpine, or for whatever reason, you know, like, oh man, I want to compare the two. Well, I can connect the Alpine back in, or connect in the brand new system. It's because it's the type of car it is, and if something happens, I don't want to gut it completely and then go, oh crap, why is that one not working? There's no diagrams, there's no nothing. Everything else is in Italian, and it's very difficult to decide. So I have this car set up so that way I can reverse everything if I need to. The goal with all of this is to make sure that we don't modify the stock harness and we've done all of that but it's required a little bit of extra leg work. This little guy is small and is out of the way as it looks, it really is integrated into the car solid. So we're going to skip a lot of things, do a little bit of movie magic, get the car up and connect it all together. It definitely it's about the alarm. That was it saying, hey, hey. This might be completely messed up, but I know in my heart where reverse is. So we're gonna put it to neutral, turn the car to ready to run. Pioneer, do your thing. You ready for this? Oh, that is, you have to admit, that's pretty sick. Go out there. Okay, okay. <laughs> this means no more Valentino Balboni sitting on the edge of this leather. This replaces 
trying to do that. that. Obviously, you get way more attention when you do this, but <laughs> I'm driving a bright yellow Lamborghini that only 150 exist in the United States. This is my insurance policy right there. You know what's kind of cool? I saw this in the options. Obviously, I angled it the wrong way. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so for somebody who angles the camera a different angle, that would be beneficial to you. It took a lot of extra work because we had to wire the camera in, get it around the massive engine. This signal line to turn on and off because if you don't wire that, you're stuck at this screen and I think you can actually choose. You can choose this. Wait, let's do one more time, one more time, one more time. I just want to do it. <sighs> Oh, that feels so good. Pioneer, I love you. I love you so much. You make the three-rotor a streetcar, and now the Diablo isn't gonna run over people when backing up or hit other cars. Look at the subtle magic here. You can't tell there are wires running to it. You can't tell anything, and of course, if I really wanted to adjust it, I can. If I really w wanted to get super fancy, we could machine a bracket you know, that holds it up here, but I use the double-sided tape under the top of this. And for those of you worrying, oh my God, double-sided tape is not an issue for these things. It's not gonna rip paint off. You can take it off when it gets super hot, <laughs> especially when I've got paint like this. We've got this hidden and ran all the way through the firewall, through the rubber grommets, all properly done. Connected to the reverse signal. Everything is solid. As you can tell, I can consistently do it. We don't have to mess with it. There's no technicalities. You drive it like a normal modern car. You just shift it to reverse and the camera pops up and shows you what's behind you. I wanted to be able to charge my iPhone without using the one connector meant for my radar detector. <laughs> No, I wasn't listening to the so instructions with that. So what we're gonna do is plug it in here. This is a one and a half amp supply. So you can actually charge. There we go, I have to enable Siri. So now, phone can set down, charge. Oh yes, Google Maps? Oh my God, not just Apple Maps. So I have Waze, that's even cooler. Phone, a friend of mine blowing me up repeatedly, messages. YouTube, how to set up Apple CarPlay. We'll play it from here. And your receiver, plug it into USB port number one. So we've got CarPlay working really well. Phone gets charged with actual amperage. We've got CarPlay, I can listen to my music. Between all of these speakers, the Apple CarPlay, connecting your phone, charging your phone, having navigation, having a backup camera, this entire solution by Pioneer shows you how much you can upgrade an old car while keeping it a classic. This is a wonderful setup. You can't even comprehend with my $300 microphone how much a quality sound system makes a difference. I showed you on a screen that yeah, there's a big difference in the audio quality, but overall, this has been a wonderful integration. These products work really well, and I am a very happy man.